In this video we want to examine the advantages and disadvantages of tall and flat structures, tall and flat organisations. Um, what we've got on the screen at the moment is an example of, let's say, a tall structure. For example, six levels of uh, administration. So perhaps we've got the, uh, the people who are nearest the market, the people who are nearest to the production of the final product at the very bottom. And going upwards we have management and other workers and at the very top we'd have the senior management. So that may be one type of structure. And we can contrast that with what we call a flat structure. For example, something like say three levels, where uh, at each level more is happening more of the production process has taken place and uh, we have the senior management at the very top but the middle will be middle management and also perhaps some responsibility for uh, line production production of the, the final product on the line. So we have different ways of looking at organisations. They could be tall uh, as in the case of the sixth level or flat in, in our example here, three levels. What we want to do now is to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each and discuss them in a little more detail. So we'll start with the advantages of tall organisations and the first advantage we, are, we can identify is that the, the quality of work will improve due to close supervision. Because there are many levels uh, at each level there will be a level of supervision and that means that the workers will be closely supervised at each level. It means that there are perhaps fewer workers per manager so they're able to have closer supervision. Uh, there are many levels of management, level, many levels of production and at each level there will be a level of management responsible for what's happening um, at that particular level. So um, it's a situation where there is close supervision. This means that the, the quality of the work will improve or should improve. It means that discipline and work relationships will improve, that there will be no abuse of resources or unnecessary wastage that workers will apply themselves because they are being closely supervised. And the control itself will be <coughs> clear and easy to observe. The workers will know exactly who's in charge and will know what is required of them. Likewise, the manager at that level will know what's required of him or her. So the, control, the whole control system is much tighter with this type of organisation. <clears throat> the manager can plan more easily because the manager knows exactly what's happening because the manager is on top of the situation. The manager can see the, the workers and the work uh, under his or her control and will therefore be able to plan more easily for uh, contingencies for breakdowns of machinery or absenteeism uh, by workers or whatever. So there's, there's more, uh, more control. The managers are able to exercise more control. The foremen, the managers, the people responsible for that level will be able to see exactly what's happening and take remedial action if it's required because of some breakdown. The, <coughs> <excuse me. coughs> the efforts of subordinates can be easily coordinated. Now that means that the, the workers, uh, their efforts can be coordinated more effectively. They can, uh, it forms a more cohesive unit. The workers are all aiming at the same thing, so uh, it's easy to organise.
There should be also mutual trust between the superior and subordinates. They should understand what they're trying to do. And because they're working in close proximity, there should be good communication channels between them. So it should be easy to communicate exactly what's required and look at issues when they arise. If the workers are finding it difficult or if there's a hold-up or um, they're experiencing bad raw materials that they can't work with or whatever it is, that should be easily communicated and the management, it should go up and down the management quite quickly so that the whole organisation is aware of what's happening and a fix can be found. Now the, the disadvantages of toll organisations, well, they have many levels of management so that decisions and actions may be delayed. I just said earlier that they could have good communication systems, well that's possible but it could also be the case that they have poor communication systems because so many people have to be consulted and information has to flow from the senior management through different layers of management all the way down to uh, the production line. Now, not only can the information be distorted on the way down, um, but it could take significant time for the information to come down. So, there are issues about the management of toll organisations. So I just mentioned that we have d delays and distortions in communication which uh, means that the wrong messages may be sent and this could be significant if serious errors are made. So there is a danger in this type of organisation that communications can lead to errors and, and many problems further down the line. It's also a costly type of organisation because there are many managerial levels, there are many levels to, to look after, so it's, it's not cheap. This one is costly, it's bureaucratic, it's, uh, it operates on many levels, each level if you like superior to the previous one, but at the same time uh, many managers and a big bill. And it's difficult to coordinate the activities at different levels. Um, the senior management can communicate their, their desires, their, their wishes down through the organisation, but ultimately that wish will be interpreted by the manager at that level, which may not be exactly what was meant by the senior management. So it's difficult to coordinate and to uh, get everyone moving in, in uh, the same direction. Different departments may have different agendas and may have different views about what is required. And they may be working not exactly in the same direction. So there's always a problem of coordination and getting the activities of the business all aimed in the same direction. Uh, there is strict supervision because there are so many managers and so many layers of organisation but that means that subordinates don't have any freedom. They, don't, they can't express perhaps initiative or if they have good ideas about how the production system is organised or, or methods of production or ways of working, if they've got good ideas they may be killed off um, very early because the manager at that level doesn't see the world the same as them or the manager at that level has got a different agenda. He or she is about to retire perhaps and doesn't want to change the work practice because it would be too much trouble. Uh, they just want to work for the next couple of years as they are and, and retire. Perhaps that's the case. Or it may be the manager is thinking of moving job, moving position to a different company and therefore is not interested in new ways of doing things. Now 
If the subordinates don't have any freedom, they're not very motivated. So morale within the business may be affected. And that's an issue to be addressed. They're not suitable for routine or standardized jobs. Uh, routine jobs, generally speaking, can uh, can be done in a more on a on a flatter basis. And we'll see how this works later. But uh, tall organisations are almost unnecessary for routine jobs, where the same production system is used over and over and over. There is no need to have a tall organisation. There's no need to commit to the expense of the extra managers and the problems of communications and so on. So, um, tall organisations may not be suitable for repetitive work. Uh, there is a danger also that with tall organisations, because managers at different levels see that perhaps as their empire and they become more dominating. So there may be a source of conflict with other managers or there may be a source of conflict with the workers, with the subordinates at that level or at levels below that level. So there is an issue about the managers and the managers own uh, perception of what is required. So there may be an issue about controlling the managers to make sure that they, they do not abuse their position. Let's try and summarize the drawbacks of taller organizations. They're less flexible and slower to respond uh, over time. So they're, they're tall and it means that they're it's difficult to control on the way down. So they, they, they tend to operate by rules and rule books and past practice and it's difficult to change that. So they are less flexible. There's a communication problem from the top to the bottom. Uh, when the message is sent out from the, the senior management, by the time it gets to the bottom level, uh, it may not be what was intended. It may be it's been reinterpreted, it's been explained differently. Um, there is a communications issue. The organization is too tall. So there may be distortion of commands and it's difficult to control the business. It's difficult for the, the senior management to know exactly what's happening at the lower levels. So there is an issue about controlling the business. And as I said before, it is far more bureaucratic than um, short or, or, or flat organizations. Right, with that in mind, let's turn our attention to the, the flat organization. Well, this has got fewer, much fewer levels, uh, perhaps two or three or four levels, much flatter than the, the tall one. Um, it's less costly because there are fewer managers. Uh, it has fewer levels of management, so it's, it's less costly. It's, it's cheaper to, to operate. Uh, quick decisions and actions can be taken because it's only a few levels of management. The senior management is able to communicate what they want and make changes much more quickly. There are fewer levels to go through, so uh, decisions can be implemented very fast. And there's good communications because there are fewer levels of management. The message is not lost or mixed up or jumbled on the way down. The senior management make a decision, then there's only a couple of levels to communicate it to, so it's, it's easy to make sure that the message is clearly understood. And because it's a flat organization, the subordinates are free from close and strict supervision and control. So the subordinates uh, have, they experience much more freedom in going about their work. 
This may lead to more motivation, but it could also lead to an abuse where, where they don't apply themselves uh, diligently to their work, or it could also lead to uh, the fact that they are not all pulling together and they're not completely synchronized or controlled. There, there, is, there is a loss of control in the business. But they are freer to make decisions. Uh, it's more suitable for routine and standardized activities where uh, the system is clearly understood by everyone. This is, this is how the job is done, this is how we did it in the past, this is how we'll do it in the future. Uh, we follow the, this cookbook, if you like, this, this production schedule, this, this way of doing it, and we'll get the final product. So uh, there is no need for detailed supervision. That's how it's it's been done in the past, and that's how it's done now. So it, there's no need for a tall organisation with many levels. Uh, the workers know exactly what's required. The management knows exactly what's required. So they just do it. The supervisors may not be too dominating because there are a large number of subordinates. So the supervisors may be more supportive and less interventionist and perhaps even less critical. Uh, the supervisors may be seen as more supporting the workers, guiding, supporting, directing the workers, as opposed to out-and-out uh, -out intervention. Now let's look at the limitations of flat structures. So the disadvantages are limitations of flat structures and these are as follows. Uh, there may be loose control because there are many subordinates under one manager. So this may lead to poor discipline in the organization, as I said earlier. Uh, one manager controlling many workers, we refer to as the span of control. Um, one manager controlling a lot of workers means that the workers uh, are not closely supervised. So there's more opportunity for them to uh, perhaps adopt sloppy work practices or not apply themselves effectively to their work or uh, perhaps there's an implication or th there's some something here that relates to productivity. Maybe there is an issue of productivity that needs to be considered. The relationship between superiors and subordinates may be bad. Um, so it may be that personal differences between workers and managers uh, become soured over time. Maybe there are personal differences or uh, maybe issues arise over time. And uh, Close and informal relations may not be possible. So uh, it finds it the teamwork, the, the idea of working in teams or working together at each level that may start to disintegrate. Managers may be seen as uh, not nice people and therefore uh, work relationships start to break down. Possible. There may be problems of teamwork because there are many subordinates under one manager. Well, teams should not be over, over large, over uh, over numbers because uh, large teams are difficult to control. There's depends on, on the function, uh, it depends on the capability of the manager and it depends on the overall environment in which the, the team operates but depending on all of those factors there is an optimum size for the team. Uh, some writers think team of about 10 to 12 is is about right. Now once you get past that you're starting to lose control. Other people will say differently but as I said it really depends on the function and it depends on the product, it depends on the environment, the working environment as to what are the best, uh, what's the best size for a team. But certainly with uh, a large number of workers 
and one manager they, it may be difficult to coordinate the, the workers and work as a team. Flat organisation structures may create problems of coordination between various uh, subordinates. So there is an, an element of uh, loss of coordination because the manager has got many people under his or her uh, control and it's difficult to coordinate all of them. Uh, it's exacerbated in the case of highly sequential work where one task must be completed before the next task. Now ensuring the optimal use of resources when you have highly sequential work like that is particularly difficult. Now this may be uh, looked at in the context of critical path analysis and some of the techniques that are around to, uh, to deal with this. But in many cases managers do not have the time or the facility or even the background to work out scientifically what the right solutions are. So often the managers are simply too busy to stand back and make good decisions. They are too busy with the here and now, dealing with problems that arise right now, trying to fix the problems to get on to fix the next problem. Because there are too many workers, too many issues, the, the management may become overwhelmed. Efficient and experienced supervisors are required to manage large numbers of subordinates and getting efficient and experienced supervisors may be a problem. Uh, many managers at the lower levels near, near uh, uh, the production end in organizations, managers may be promoted from within the ranks of the workers. They become foremen and supervisors and eventually become the manager of a section. Um, that's good for morale because the other workers can see that if they work hard and apply themselves they also could be promoted at some future time or, or move to another company with a good track record and perhaps hope for, for promotion. But it's difficult to find efficient and experienced supervisors and particularly difficult to work in an environment where they are controlling many workers because that is a high pressure job. The, sh uh, the flat organization may not be suitable for complex activities. When the work is complex it needs to be broken down into small parts and assembled as it goes through the production process and a flat organization may not be the right one. In this case a tall organization may be correct because it's complex. It's complex, it needs uh, different levels dealing with different aspects of the work. There is a monitoring issue to make sure that the, the work is of the right quality and also that the sequence of tasks uh, are in the, the right order and there, there is a good use of resources all the way through the organization. So um, with complex tasks the flat organization may not be suitable. Because there are a large number of uh, subordinates per manager the quality of performance may be bad it's difficult to supervise a large number of workers at one level. So the manager can't oversee everyone. The manager perhaps is preoccupied by failures in the system or uh, shortages in the system or machine breakdown or whatever it is. Uh, which means other parts are not being supervised correctly and the quality of the work may suffer as a consequence. And that may be an issue. 
So what have we done here? Well, we've contrasted the tall organization, tall structure, with the, the flat structure. We've looked at the advantages of each and the disadvantages of each. And it's difficult to summarize other than saying it really does depend on the product, on the throughput as well, how many are required, and to what extent the the breakdown of the work enables uh, a tall organization to emerge. So each have their advantages and disadvantages but we need to be aware of each and we need to, uh, if we were starting from the beginning, to be careful to design the production process and the organizational chart to be suitable for whatever production process is is going to take place. So the the structure should match the product, the market, the the size of the output required, as well as all of the issues that we discussed here. And that concludes this session, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.